I think after tonight, the non-food product entities are going to outnumber the food ones. Yeah. So it's turning more into a flea market than really a farmer's market. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, but when we came to us initially, the intent was that it was going to be local, local produce and local food being sold here. So that's... It's just always been in the back of my mind in terms of what are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to have a, a food market or are we trying to have a, you know, a crafts? Cool crafts. I think, I think the original scope was based on the protocol established by other area markets, Duxbury, Hingham, Cohasset, and Marshfield, where it was a gathering place for people in the community to shop and to be purveyors of the local merchants, the gardeners, and perhaps the, the local artisans. I'd love to get a couple other artisans in, maybe photographers or potters, something along those lines. In keeping with the fact that we've, we're setting a precedent here, we cede to, to the selectmen in the town. So you tell us what you want and what you don't want. And, and we really, really want to work within that framework. Um, people come in, we have one non-food person there, and that would be me. I, I do jewelry. Um, we have Steverman Farms, Lane's Lobsters, Mark has his produce. Uh, Something Sweet just joined us. She's a baker, sells through Steverman, received her Hawker's Peddler's license, and she's setting up. So that's what we have so far. We're just trying to gain momentum here because there is a lot of interest, a lot of foot traffic, and, and people coming in. It's wonderful so far. Yeah, We're good. very excited. Good. I, I think uh, Rick, Rick's going to go ahead, Rick. Uh, you mentioned uh, local, and Ms. Sanders hails from Orleans. And so that's one of the things I'm really hung up on here. And, and I appreciate I, that. I don't know that we can exclude. Can we exclude people? I think we can exclude by their provenance. What we want, um, but I also understand the point of when you increase foot traffic, it benefits everybody. You know, if someone comes to do this, then it's going to help benefit you. But you're you're a local person, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you, you're, you're obviously sustainable situate, mm -hmm. so that's also a local thing. So, all right. My, my you know, I I agree with. Tony's original point when we did or at least my feeling at first and I do recall speaking to Mark about this right from the start as well is you know farmers market is fruits and vegetables etc cetera, etc cetera. so I'm very concerned about this particularly since it's not a local person about this first one there's a drugstore within 50 yards of the farmers market which also sells beauty products and, and uh, bath products etc and I don't think it was the intention, I really think it's your intention to be in direct competition with people in that situation. Mm -hmm. But that's in fact what this is doing, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. And I don't think we want to, uh, I, I guess I'm concerned too, what, I'm, what mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do about it, I don't know. But I mean, it's, yeah. but you see where we're coming from. Yeah. Absolutely. It's still the first year. Yeah. And how long is it? It's only going for another four weeks or something? We, we would like to run through the end of October and based on uh, what we hope is, what we consider success, start up next year right out of the gate in June. And well, I guess well, what October. I would say is, that, you know, I'm sure we're gonna get feedback yep. and if we start getting feedback that the local merchants are, are kind of against some of the products that are being yep. sold there, then next year we talk about it and and probably scrutinize it a little bit more. Does that make? That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just going to say, um, I've heard nothing about, uh, nothing but good things about your jewelry, by the way. And I didn't realize you're the one. <laughs> I just want to say, I know that there's an issue about whether or not. Oh, I, I, I've heard very good things. So uh, maybe there are two good things. So maybe it should be. Um, but having very said that, I, I think you know. Uh, I, I, I've believe me, I have. Um, <laughs> Having said that, though, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that, you know, it's the first year out. I want to make sure that this farmer's market's able to get off the ground and be able to sustain itself. If, if local people were able to go in and, and sell, I'm not adverse to saying just not just produce, but other items, jewelry and other crafts um, items. I mean, I, I think I used the example when Mark was here. Paul Cuxtis initially started making signs. Now, he didn't have the ability to have the 
clientele or the um, customer base to be able to open up a shop and try to make a go of it. So the farmer's market lends itself to an ability where, hey, look, you can go out, see how you do, and maybe your product's going to sell. And if it does, then it takes the next step to kind of add business to the town. So I, I, I see it as a, a, a benefit on a one-day, one-shot deal to see how the, um, the items sell. I, I'm, I'm inclined to say, let's give it a chance. Let's see how it goes. If it turns out that it's in direct competition with other businesses in the, in, in the town, that pay taxes, then I'd say, okay, fine. Next year we can call that out, as Tony had suggested. But I think we don't necessarily want to start deciding who should go in and go out. But if we hear that there's some negative impact, then I'd say, yeah, I'd be inclined to say we should. Um, and, and, and unlike the last time when I know that we were talking about vendors coming in to go around, this is a one-shot deal. It's in the afternoon for a very limited time during a limited time of the year. And because we're also in competition with Cohasset and Marshfield at other times of the day, I think you know, um, it's a little different, a little more unique than direct competition um, in my mind. So I, I'm inclined to say let's get it in there. Obviously, I think it was raised at some point by Rick or Tony about this is not a flea market. We know you guys have taste. If it's going to have to be, you know, dealt with next year, we will. But everybody I've heard has said nothing but good things about it. So I'm inclined to say let's put the people in, see how it goes. It's only eight more weeks. And um, then if we hear some negative things, we can address it next year when we get started yet again. Entertain a motion for the yeah. first one. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant Hockler's, uh, Hocker Peddler's license to Sustainable Situate. Uh, no. Chief, oh, not, no. not them. Unless that would be great. I, I, <laughs> actually, I, I'd appreciate <laughs> two separate motions. I'd appreciate two separate motions, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To grant um, Hocker's Peddler's license to Catherine Saunders, mm -hmm. Herbs, Bath, and Beauty Products to sell items at the North Situate a town-owned commuter rail lot in front of the WPA building from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays from now until the last week of October 2009. Second. Uh, the, uh, before you second it, this license has a temporary waiver of a 15-minute rule uh, per the Selectman's policy number 43-99. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Yeah. Opposed. Unopposed. Next. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Um, I am Gwen Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Nice to Thanks. meet you. Um, I am the treasurer for Sustainable Situate and agreed to be represented our organization here. I also applied for a pedalist license. Um, as you know, I think that we're pretty much a grassroots organization trying to get information out to the people of Situate about what can be done about it. Right? We did the recycle bins, which I know you guys liked. Um, you know, we're working on anti-idling, a little bit of a campaign. One of our members just recently wrote a letter to the editor. Um, so we just feel like we should be a presence um, at the farmer's market. Um, right now, what we, the thing we're going to sell, mostly it's going to be, we're going to be there for information, you know, maybe stuff about the wind turbine, how that's going, and whatever information people in the town want to know about. But we do have, we had bought these um, last year sort of as a fundraiser. They're called Chico Bags. So, you know, a lot of people are bringing, um, their canvas bags to the supermarkets. But this is more um, something it folds down into this. So you can clip it on your purse or keep it in your purse and it unfolds into this nifty little thing. So if you go into CVS or go to the bookstore or Hennessy's or something, you have this and you don't have to use a bag. So it really fulfills our purpose. So people will be able to put the local grown vegetables exactly, in that Exactly, exactly, <laughs> when they're there. So it has sustainable <laughs> situate on one side. You know, it's made by Chico Bags. Um, so we would be selling them as a fundraiser yep. to help support our printing costs and everything that we have to do. Cool. I, I think this is motion. great. Doesn't seem like a motion, like Mr. Chair? I love a motion. Move that the, wow, the that lights are That wasn't the motion I looked for. But <laughs> move that the uh, Board of Selectmen vote to grant Hawker's Peddler's License to Sustainable Situate. Um, to sell, uh, to sell items, we'll Chico leave it bags, general, whatever. Chico bags, items at the North Situate Town-owned commuter rail parking lot in front of the WPA building from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays from now until the last week of October of 2009, and that this license has a temporary waiver of the 15-minute rule per the Selectman's uh, policy number 4399. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. And thank you Thanks for all the work you're doing in, in town also. Thank you. Uh, the next is a public hearing uh, uh, 
on two liquor violations, Village Market and Madfish Restaurant. Uh, let me, uh, anyone that's going to speak in this matter, would you please stand, raise your hand. Yep. Uh, do you solemnly swear the testimony that you've given at the hearing is the complete truth? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was made aware that the Mad Fish representative was stuck in traffic. Yes, so I just. We were prepared to go forward with uh, the uh, village market. Uh, yeah, Marshfield or Hummer Rock? Do you know? I'm sorry. We're sorry about that. Traffic's bad on 3 <laughs> North. <laughs> uh, I'm reading from a police report written by Detective Robert Lappel. Uh, on April 23rd, 2009, as part of the department's uh, compliance checks, consistent with the alcohol licensing grant that we achieved, uh, conducted a sting using a 19-year-old college student. Uh, at approximately 7.40 p.m., the 19-year-old went into the village market and attempted to buy and was sold a 12-pack of Budweiser light beer. Uh, he stated the clerk asked for an ID and then indicated or, or stated, I'm supposed to ask for an ID, but you look old enough, and then he rang up the beer. The clerk was later identified. Uh, At these drinking establishments uh, and the package stores, the 19-year-old was told that uh, he can't show any ID. As a matter of fact, he had no ID on him. Uh, if the circumstances were such that he was asked for an ID, he would uh, just say, I don't have one, and leave. He wasn't to argue uh, trying to make a purchase. So uh, those are the facts as it relates to the village market. Thank you. If I could ask one question, either you or Jim. Uh, I know it in the village market the procedure is, is I've observed that is if someone comes with alcohol and someone's at the register underage, they call over the manager or someone over 21 to ring it up. Uh, correct. Uh, and I've seen that. Well, it, like you saw, if you came in yeah. and you were going to buy a six pack, you'd yeah. be carded, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably, they right probably right. wouldn't card you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you but, look over but, but, but they, if someone's under 21 at the register, they call over someone to punch it in and sell it. Actually, that's, so. under, that's under 18. If under 18, yeah, okay. If someone 18 years old or older can sell yeah. beer or wine. So let me ask this question. In this case, who was it that said okay? Was it the person at the register? It was the person, it was a, a young gentleman uh, who was eight, over 18. At the register. At the register. He didn't have to ask for the manager. Like, uh, he okay. should have. And he didn't. He should have done two things. Yeah. I, I, was, I didn't understand. Let me just see if, before you finish, Mike. Uh, yes. Anyone have any questions right now? Well, I'll be able to ask my questions later, but anyone have any questions? Yeah, Mike? just um, I, I noticed uh, as far as, and I know that Madfish isn't here, but those were the two that were found noncompliant. Uh, were there other, I don't want to know the specifics, but were there other establishments that you had gone to? Yes, we checked all the uh, licensed establishments. Okay. In town. And, and I say that because in 2007 you did the same. There was a failure rate of nine out of the that's 16, correct. but the only failure rate was these two. Two. Okay, yes. that's all. Thank you. Uh, so I, I have a question for for something that Jim just said. Yeah, but that's why I'm going to just wait till everyone uh, wait okay. till finished with. Uh, okay. Sorry. Everyone's finished with Mike. Yes. So, the the person at the register was over 18 or under 18. And that person was the person that said, because that person didn't have to call someone over right. to check it, right? No. Okay, so it was that person that said you look old enough or whatever? I, 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 it's new to me tonight okay. that um, uh, supposedly I had heard that my, my cashier had asked for an ID be, and the person said I don't have one. So that's not the case? No. Okay, well, that's news to me tonight. Okay. Um, All right. When I talked to person, I don't want to mention his name. Of course. Um, he had told me that's what happened. Um, needless to say, he immediately should have gone ahead and called the manager. I mean, if, if he did do that, and he was in violation of our policy right then and there, um, where... But he was over 18. If he, if you came in and you look, didn't look 21, or look 28, yeah. the cashier was asked to say, do you have an ID? If the person says, no, I don't have an ID, person, the cashier stops at what he's doing and says, 
let me get a manager for you. Oh, understood. And the manager comes over and makes a decision whether, you know, he looks 28 or our policy is if you don't have an ID, you don't buy liquor, period. Right. Right. And um, uh, that wasn't followed. Um, so, I mean, what ended up happening is I ended up, so I wanted to fire this person, but he's a real nice kid and I didn't feel comfortable Understood. doing it. Yep. And I gave him a three week suspension, uh, talked to him, went over and over, he was embarrassed, you know, and didn't want to talk to me, he knew he did wrong. He knew, knew he did wrong that night, as it turns out. And it was just a, an unfortunate situation where he didn't follow policy. Okay. And um, that's why we're, I'm here. I mean, we, we take it very, very seriously in the store. I mean, I tell my high school kids who work there that if I ever catch them, you know, selling a six pack or a beer or wine to anyone underage, not only will I arrest the person who's trying to do it or have them arrested, but I'll have the, the employee arrested. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, we take it very, very seriously. Mm. And um, it's just, I'm embarrassed that it happened to us. I do have one question, I mean, I, and it really isn't pertinent, but I'm sure I get tested regularly or it, it not once a year or I would think every couple of months anyways. I don't know how often I've been tested over the last three or four years, but is there any, only twice? Twice, wow. Yeah. Uh, Tony? Just, just one question for the detective. Uh, back to following up on John's. In the one that we did in 2007, was this establishment part of the nine that were found that were non-compliant? Non so this is the second, as you just said, they've been tested two times in, since 2007, and both times this establishment was found non-compliant. I, I, I speak I to that. Mr. McGinnis on a regular basis. Uh, he has inquired of the police department in the past certain you know, regulations as it relates to uh, some of the younger kids that do work there and uh, you know like every establishment there is a, a consistent effort on management's part at this uh, at the store to make sure this doesn't happen unfortunately it has happened again so. uh sean so the policy is if if your clerk is 15 16 17 and I would come in to buy beer. Shh, that person cannot sell it to me, correct? They can't touch it. Right. So they have. That's when they call over a, a manager. Uh, yeah. And right. The manager will actually bring it through. Right. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Right. And that's someone under eighteen. Right. Okay. J John, Jim, it, this is my concern, and that's the reason why I ask. And 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 that's not to say that you or your store is is not concerned with the potential. The concern I have is that the two, shall we say, stings that the town has had. Um, you failed both times. There, your store has failed, not you, because I know that went happened with you and other people. And that's the thing that's disconcerting to me, because um, the responsibility, obviously there's a responsibility on, on the store's part, and there's an obligation there. And, you know, I don't think, you know, when, when we were here the last time with the violators, primarily with the restaurants, we asked that they go through the TIP certification, and they did. And I don't think there was anything that we did with the stores other than give them a warning, so to speak. And, and we're, we as a board are in an awkward position. Um, you know, people, we want to encourage people to shop at your store. We want to encourage people to, you know, frequent and, and purchase from town owned businesses. But had this been, a, you know, obviously a, a situation where, uh, a viol not a violation, but it had it <coughs> sold more or something else and a serious incident had occurred, you know, obviously it would be even more egregious. And that's the problem that I'm looking at tonight because I'm sitting here going, well, we have two violations, um, and not to say that you haven't been vigilant about it, but I think obviously you have to be more vigi vigilant about doing something here because um, the only other violator is Madfish, and w at least we dropped it from nine to seven or f to two. And um, but the second sting, it, it happened. I, I I feel bad it happened to you, to be honest with you. But I, I honestly think we have an obligation to make sure that it doesn't happen the third time it goes out. And I'd like to think that the next time they do a sting, we're not going to see anything from your store. But regardless of the future, I think we have to do something tonight to make sure that you and the store and the employees will ensure that that will not happen again. And that's the that's the position that I'm looking at. And I, I you know, um, thank God nothing happened. We all know that. But um, I, I think the board has to do something to, to say, hey, look, because we have to set an example because we're the ones that hold, we grant the licenses. and. Uh, 
you know. I, I have to say I commend you for coming in. You know, you didn't come in here and deny anything. You know, you've asked a few questions, and I think that's commendable. I just think that the board has to do something in that situation. John? Uh, Mike, as John just touched on, I had it written down earlier. I know as the restaurants, they get TIP certified, whether the, someone will come to their establishment. Is the same thing available for the marketplace and the other liquor stores? Yes, it's not called TIPS, but it's... Uh, it's a version of that specific. Uh, I know after the last series of uh, compliance checks that uh, one of the proprietors, I, I believe it was Taylor Tibbetts, ended up discovering this and distributing it. Now, uh, I have some information in the office on it, which I can get and, and again, redistribute it. But, uh, you know, the, the village market's in a unique situation because, uh, you know, it's one of the few places that actually employs kids yeah, right and uh, you know the, the jobs just aren't out there for kids like they used to be I'm wondering if the, some part of the solution might not be that there's a alcohol specific cash register and that uh, the kids cannot man it that it has to be manned by uh, somebody a little more responsible Jim have you taken advantage of any of these things uh, it's it's you go into the store on any particular <coughs> night um, very rarely are you going to find an older person working the register. No, I, I realize that. I, uh, the tips thing, my manager did go over tips. Yeah, time. just, um, uh, you know. He went to that, uh, he took that course. And um, it, and he did say it was. Could you close the door, really please? Thank you. Towards restaurants. Mm. Um, right. And the liquor store is really not towards our business. Right, right. But um, he would get information out of it worthwhile information as far as, you know, reading IDs and that kind of thing, and how to read them in the state that was in. Rick? I think Tony was ahead of Tony. Me. Well, I was just going to say in the letter that we wrote to you on February 5th, 2008, it requires that you go to this TIP training at the Citro Public Library, and did you send one person there, I assume? I don't recall that letter. So, um, just to recount, I mean, Again, I, I don't think anyone intentionally serves minors. Unfortunately, it happens, and it's a it's a very serious deal in my mind, and I know everybody else on the board. Um, you know, if it happens as one instance that we happen to do a sting, you never know how many other times it slips through the net. So I I, I mean I take this very seriously, and I know we all do. And and uh, yes, of course we have to do something. I mean, 2007, when it happened, then we gave all the violators a written warning. Um, and it seemed to have had some impact because the, um, the percentage of the people that got violations the second time went down considerably. Unfortunately, your establishment didn't. And um, in the letter that we sent to you, it says that, um, you know, it's told about the, the hearing that we're having to go over it, and it told you the time and date for this TIP certification class for your employees to go there. It's recent. No, no, this is back from the violation in 07. Yes, we did send that. Right. So, um, So I think, I think whatever we did last time didn't work. <laughs> you know, and I think it's management's job to put their foot down and make sure that, that whatever your policies are are going to be foolproof and that it doesn't happen again. So um, in my opinion, the penalty has to be harsh enough so that, so that we ensure that it won't happen again. If you have to, as Detective Stewart just said, if there has to be one register where liquor always has to go through this and it's going to be an adult on that register, you know, some way, I can't tell you how to run your operation, but some way something has to happen so that this does not happen again. And like I said, you know, just because you get caught on two sting operations, who knows what happens every other weekend. So it's a, you know, it's a big, big concern of mine, and I think it's, it's going to be a, uh, you know, it, it's tough because we have to come down with a, with a penalty that has to be significant and also knowing that there's, I don't know if we're at this point in the discussion, but obviously the ABCC has things in there and they there's certain guidelines that you have to follow for them also and we know it's your revenue you know we we certainly don't want to put um, you know an overbearing burden on on a local establishment as well but again somehow the point has to be got across that y you as the owner of the establishment have to make the steps that make sure that this does not happen again and we do have guidelines that we've talked about in the prior one um, I couldn't find my copy of those but but you know, they were, they're pretty strict in terms of first violation, second violation, third violation, you know, lose license type stuff. So, um, 
I yeah, assume at some I, point we'll talk about that. I have uh, uh, asked Kim to, to give to each member of the board, you brought up the guidelines, uh, guidelines that were submitted by, uh, to the board a year or two ago, maybe two or three years ago, uh, never voted this policy, but, but kind of guidelines as far as, as uh, <coughs> infractions and penalties. Uh, and I've asked him to give that to the board, for the board to, to look at it, tweak it, change it, do whatever you want with it, and come back at some fr future date with something that we could actually have in front of us as a, as a, as a guideline. But that's... And so that all the establishments know that yeah, this is what this, it is. This is what it's it's, it's not be. subjective anymore. And, I, and I'll tell you, that guidelines that we have, the policy that we're, we're not adhering to right now, it's never accepted. It's pretty strict. It's Rick? Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, just for each, as we know, there's two steps we need to do for each establishment mm -hmm. and, and dealing with Village Market right now. First, we have to find or determine whether a violation occurred or not. And then the second part, if we do determine a violation, would be what type of how to handle it. Yep. I think the discussion has has included both parts. But given that Mr. or Lieutenant has, has testified and that Mr. McGinnis has pretty much acknowledged that a violation did in fact occur, which we appreciate you coming in and, and, and being forthright, I would like to move that the Board of Selectmen find a liquor violation, a liquor license violation occurred on April 23rd, 2009 at the Village Market. I'll second that. Motion been made and second that a violation occurred. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. As, as Mr. Murray pointed out, the second part of the uh, of the second motion made in this item is to impose a penalty for that violation. Uh, I'll open it up for discussion. Rick, go ahead. Yeah, um, I think Mr. Danahy and, and uh, Mr. Vignani and the rest of the board have spoken quite eloquently about the fact that this is a essentially a repeat offense of what happened last time. And last time there was a um, a, uh, a warning, a written warning that was given to which you responded and you did follow the tips and so on um, and and have made an honest effort to uh, to address the situation but as lieutenants pointed out and everybody here has pointed out a violation did occur again. Um, having said that my personal feeling is that it, it seems pretty clear that you're, you're working hard at this you acknowledge completely the seriousness of the situation but I would not feel comfortable with just giving a second written warning I do think we need to, to elevate, but I'm also not comfortable with it, with elevating, um, you know, going, you know, multi days or hitting a particular weekend or anything like that. Given um, the scale of the situation, it's a serious violation, but uh, fortunately, nothing came from it. I think the the owner and the proprietor have expressed um, uh, concern and, and um, remorse. Um, so my personal feeling, and I'm not making a motion at this point, I'm just putting it out, would be something on the order of a one-day violate, a one-day uh, suspension of the, of the license. And in terms of when we do it, um, I always just sort of think it should be roughly the same season as, um, I mean, just for some arbitrary thing. I mean, something like this, I don't want to get them on July 4th weekend or anything like that. Um, so I would just suggest... April 23rd, 2010. That's the same day, just you know, a year later. And just a one. That's day. not a motion. That that's is not a motion. Okay. I'm just starting a discussion yep. to yep. throw a straw man out for yep. for Tony? scale. Yeah, uh, just to add to the discussion, I, I'm not making a motion yet either. But I think that that's too lenient. I think that that's, um, you know, probably the very least that we could do at this point in time, seeing as they got a written motion uh, warning. warning last time. Yep. And I, my, I'm thinking more in the lines of three days. And I think it should be, um, I think it should happen immediately. You know, I, 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 I'm not as concerned about the time period, but I don't, I don't think picking days in the future or anything. I think if we do it now, we find them in violation now, um, just implement it. And I think something more on the line of three days would be more appropriate for this. Thank you. All right, I'll chime in. Um, <laughs> and that, it's, it's great, we all have our own opinions. Um, Obviously, there's a violation, so um, we have to take it to the next level. I, I, I'm inclined to say that you know we should do um, one day. Um, my my preference would be to pick a Friday or a Saturday. <coughs> I wouldn't pick Labor Day weekend, um, but I would pick a Friday or Saturday because that's generally a, a day that I would assume that more people will probably try to frequent the uh, market and and try to do it. But um, as a incentive um, that gives the board some leverage is to say that you know. We might say three days, 
one day to serve, so to speak, and suspend the remaining two days over a period of 12 months to ensure that nothing's going to happen in the next 12 months creates an incentive for the proprietor to make sure that nothing happens. And in the event that there's another violation in the future, then those three addi two additional days will be served. Um, I, I think, you know, um, again, I think it, it serves both your purposes, but I'm not doing it to get you guys to compromise, but I just think it's a, a situation that, you know, we have to ele elevate it, and um, I think by doing so, you, you create an incentive to say to the establishment, fix it. And um, in this case, one day, and, and, and I presume and assume that, you know, it's going to be rectified. One, one day served is enough. I, I'd be inclined to say, and, and although I think it's clever to do April, um, given the time period, I, I think it's true it should be ser served sooner than later. But I would not want to do it um, the weekend of Labor Day weekend. Um, but I would say a Saturday or a Friday would be consistent because that's a day that I think they probably do better. And I'd say that kind of hits the, hits the, um, uh, the uh, purse, so to speak. And I think, I think it will rectify it. There's one question before I do. What day does it occur on? Thursday. Thursday, thank you. Great, John. I guess I would agree with a little bit of what everyone said, um, starting with Rick. One day I would feel would be uh, appropriate. And then my thought before John spoke was if something happens and if you're here again, you know, something three to five, but where John has already put some type of a probation on it, that's lack of a better word, if it happens within 12 months, I don't want to put words in your mouth, then it would go to three days. And I would say, where I might disagree with you a little bit, is uh, like Joe just said, I would recommend a Thursday, possibly in the fall. Um, John, if I, could, if I could just one quick question. So your motion would be one, three days, one day served, two suspended. Correct, That's for a 12 month period. Jim, can I just say one other thing? Yep. Jim, if, if it is possible through, <coughs> through the police department, if it is possible to have an organization come to your store, it would mean a lot to me. And you could have your staff, 18 or older, whoever might be at a register. We just have meetings. It just, you know, just to, uh, you know, I don't even know what it would cost. You're in a tough business. I, I, I I, I'd that. be even inclined to, if there is an organization, I know that one of the other establishments had mentioned that, then I'd be inclined to say, and, and, and sorry, Jim, if it turns out that's a cost to you, I'd be like, you got to pay it. And then I'd be inclined to say, okay, those are two additional days that we're talking about, providing that there is something there that you take an active step more than just what you've done before in the past, then I'd be inclined to say, that's, that's fine. That'll satisfy those potentially two days. But I guess the point I'm trying to drive is this. It's a serious violation, as you know. turns into a really serious situation. Um, it's not just you. We're not singling you, <coughs> your, your, your store out. I go there. Everybody on the board goes there. And we want to encourage people to shop there because we want that business in town. But the um, consequences can be very drastic, as we have seen in other situations before this board. And we as a board need to ensure that you're not going to be another violator in the future. So uh, if you can appreciate that, you may not like it, but I hope you can respect that from the board. I think uh, everyone said this. Say, I, uh, I could say one more when you go ahead. Um, I, I respect all of your opinions, but we're saying it's a serious issue, yet we're giving them the most lenient penalty that we could. And I don't understand it. You know, we've gone through this before. We had we have drinking problems in the town, and. You know, we're worried about hitting them in the wallet. We're worried about picking the right day of the week. We're worried about not giving too many days penalty. And it's happening. You know, we're talking about if it happens again. If it happens again, you know, I think the license gets revoked on the third time in the guidelines that we have now. So it isn't, you know, and nothing personally against you. I shop in your store. I think it's great. Somehow you've got to do something that makes sure this doesn't happen again. I don't think we take two days and throw them and say if it happens again. If it happens again, it's going to be seven or ten days or something really re dramatic. Well, hold and on. Let me finish, and then you can talk. Um, you know, I don't think we can err on the side of leniency here. I think we've got to get our point across to all the establishments in town that this cannot happen again. And, you know, three days, I don't think sounds like it's that much. I, it's, it is a lot. I, I understand. It's, it's income coming to you, but 
I think one day sounds way too low, and I think th three days is more appropriate. I'm only one vote here, but that's my opinion. Just to clarify, if there's a violation in the next 12 months, three days goes. That doesn't mean that the second violation doesn't come before this board and there's going to be another penalty, which could be revocation or suspension altogether. I'm saying that we give them one day. It's a, I shall we say, suspend the other two days. But if in the next 12-month period there's a violation, it's the full period. The full in other words, it goes right back to this board saying it's going to be a full three days. But that second violation, or in this case a third violation comes in, there could be a full suspension or revocation of that license. I'm not suggesting anything because it goes to the severity of the, of the, of the um, offense. And so my preference has always been to say, take a look at each of the uh, violations, take a look at it, and, and, and I know that we'll have this discussion at a future date, but I think it's important for the board to be able to go through this with some, some discretion to determine whether or not the violation is uh, so offendable or so offensive that we do think about suspending altogether. I'm just saying in this circumstance, there's been a violation. Um, a second and I violation. Think, uh, correct, a second violation. The first one was given to warnings to everybody, and there shouldn't be a warning here. There has to be some form of a sus suspension, in my opinion. I think given what the facts were, um, and hearing what he had to say, okay, fine. So I'm of that opinion. I did the same thing at the last hearing. But if it turned out that there was a different set of facts before us, then I'd be probably a lot more inclined to say three to five days, or maybe if, depending on the circumstances, a complete suspension. But I don't think, based on what I'm hearing, that it merits it at this time. But I'm suggesting that we should have three days, one to serve right now, and if there's a violation in the next 12 months, the full three days are put in place just for this offense, not for and the next one. And then Can the I next ask John two quick questions to clarify? Go ahead. Why are you suspending two days? And what would have happened to make you, what, what would you have had to have heard tonight that would have made you think that three days would have been reasonable? For what, did, what did you hear okay. that caused you to say we should give the most lenient penalty we can? Well, the most lenient would be to give them a warning or not do well, anything, but I'm not suggesting give that. Them a warning. You gave them a warning two years ago. Could have given them a warning again if I thought so, and I'd say that, but I don't think that's the case. Okay, so, so I think the fact that he's done it twice in a row under the two stings merits that we have to do something stronger than the last one. Okay. And so we had a sting that went in and did it. Now, if there wasn't a sting and we found out that there was a different set of circumstances, that some minor went in there, that, you know, um, and, we, we, and the minor ends up in a motor vehicle accident, that's a different set of facts that escalates the situation. Or, you know, I, Tony, you're asking me to suspect and to hypothesize no, no, I'm about what why, it is. Why but you based on what I'm hearing, you. excuse me, I'm talking. Based on what I'm hearing tonight, I think that the, the punishment that I'm proposing is reasonable in the circumstances. So, I mean, each cir set of circumstances for everything is different. But, it, you know, I, I hear that we want to have boilerplate in saying we're going to have a one, two, three strike, and then that's it. I don't subscribe to that. I subscribe to listening to what the facts are. So I subscribe to listening to what the lieutenant and the police department has to say, to hear what's in the defense. And if, the, if after hearing that, it makes sense to implement uh, a more lenient or more severe punishment, so to speak, that's the, board of the, uh, that's the duty of the board. And, and in the circumstances I'm hearing tonight, I think a, a three-day suspension, one to serve right now, and trying to encourage him to do the right thing over the next 12 months because he's, he's going to be under a, um, a microscope. And I wouldn't be surprised there will probably be another test in the next 12 months. If they fail, boom, three days are going to be served, and then we're going to come in for a harsher penalty if that's the case. Rick, Murray? Yeah, since I started off on this, I'd, I'll just chime in. First, I'd like to answer Tony's question that he posed to John because I think it's a really good question, and since I first came up with the one day, I would like to answer it myself as well. Um, what I, I, would, I would be recommending something more than the one day served, and I do like John's idea of it being three days with two suspended. Um, I would be asking for more than one day if, if, for example, one or more of the following had occurred, none of which did. Um, if it was argued, obviously, it, if Mr. McGinnis, and again, he did not, but if Mr. McGinnis denied it in the face of overwhelming evidence, if Mr. McGinnis showed no concern, if Mr. McGinnis had not taken the steps last time to train his clientele, those sorts of things. But all those sorts of things Mr. McGinnis has done. So that's just, I mean, we're obviously going to agree to disagree on this, but that's just to answer the question that you asked, John, since I'm also of the one-day ilk on this point. That's where I'm coming from on this. So if he refuted it? In the face of overwhelming evidence, because as we know, there are many situations where we have, you know, 15 different witnesses from here to sundown 
saying one thing, and then in the, in the face of that overwhelming evidence, it's very clear. So that, that to me is important, and we can all agree to disagree on that or not, but that's just to answer the question. Um, you know, I'd suggest one year from now as, as, a, as a straw man, I do like what Mr. Harris and Mr. Danahy have suggested, it, and yourself as well, uh, Tony, about it being sooner. So uh, just for the sake of making a motion and moving this one forward, I would move that the Board of Selectmen vote to um, suspend the retail wine and malt beverages license held by the Village Market, 71 Front Street, Situate, Massachusetts, uh, for a period of three days, um, two of which will be um, suspended, and the uh, first day to be served on Thursday, September 10th, which is the, th that's the end of the motion. I'm just, I'm looking at my calendar, that's four days after Labor Day. The motion's been made, I would be looking for a second on that and then discussion. <coughs> second. Second. Discussion from the. I would only add to that motion that it needs to be uh, kept, um, the suspension, or uh, in other words, that the period oh, yes. of time would be for 12 months and in the event that there was an infraction during that 12 month period, that the remaining two days would then be immediately uh, served. Um, I mean, my, my preference would be on the, the next two so the success of Saturdays, but um, but again, I, that's my I'll immediate I'll withdraw my second then. Yep. I will remake that motion as amended by Danny. So it's, the motion has so been, been amended. Now I'll second it. Now it's seconded. All right, discussion. Uh, Mike. It's, uh, I just want to say that I, I know the board uh, within the last couple of years have kind of deviated from the guidelines. And uh, the guidelines says it's just what they are, the guidelines trying to help you assess the, the different situations which uh, are thrown at you. But what I do have concern for, I, I was curious if town council has taken a good hard look at the suspended sentence version that, we're, that we've, we've started to do here. And my concern with that is uh, I've seen how it works <coughs> in court. And just because if somebody's on a suspended sentence, just because there's another violation, they don't automatically get scooped up and taken away. Okay, there's due process. He's entitled to a hearing, so you're gonna go through this whole thing again. Not just with the hearing that we just had to make sure that, you know, I mean, you've already found that there's a violation, but he's entitled to due process. He's gonna have to come forward with a new violation, be sentenced on the two days suspended, and then be sentenced again. And I just think it's kind of a trick bag that I don't, I don't, I'm not so sure the town council would be in complete agreement with the way that it's being done right now. May I address that? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mike, I've actually seen it done that way in other towns, so that's Have the you? reason why. And my point being is that his ability to appeal the decision of this board tonight is going to start once that decision's made. If he decides to appeal it, he's going to have to take it to the ABCC. That's so right. if he it's fails to, to appeal that, you got it, means we're <coughs> through the terms you got it. Of so this then he violation. can't, his due process is tonight, and his ability to appeal that decision's going to happen the day after tonight. You know what towns, just, oh, we can talk later. We'll talk later, but I, it, it has. That's why I'm curious about yeah, so that's the reason why it acts as a, as a good leverage to- I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. I just want to make sure that we're not setting ourselves up for a uh, problem down the road. I, just one comment, Jim, uh, and I think that uh, we're all, I think we're all in the exact same boat here. We, 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 we all shop in the store, uh, and we see how difficult it is, and we see how hard you work, as others do, uh, but I'll only speak to you. <coughs> And making sure it doesn't happen. It's, it's, uh, you're constant. I've seen it scores of times uh, where someone's called over the manager. And, and so I've seen this, your policy in action. I've seen it work. However, it's, it's been pointed out more than once tonight, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, the idea of having a dedicated register, I don't know what that means, labor costs, or, you know, that's something. And again, I'm certainly not took. Is an idea maybe worth looking into? It would just, it would condense the potential problems to one area. But that's just a thought in my part, and certainly something you can think of in your own mind over the next. I don't, I don't want to get off on the subject, but what if you had two car load, you know, two well, cots, it, and then know. what do you do? Go to two lines, you know. I don't know. I mean, it's, that's up to, it, it may not work. I'm just thinking it may be a way to help the situation. 
before we vote, Tony? You know, I hear you guys trying to come up with solutions. I don't care what he, what he does. I just want to make sure that minors don't get served. And that's your job. And I, you know, I know we don't always agree with everything on this board, but I, I wish that we would take a stronger stance on this. And I don't think that there was a lesser penalty that we could have given. And, um, you know, we, we're setting precedent here for future, for future people to come before us. And we are all saying it's a very serious issue, and I believe that we all believe it is a serious issue. And I don't think that our penalties are um, in line with our words. I disagree, but that's where uh, reasonable minds disagree. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, discussion, any further on the motion? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor of Mr. Denny's motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The vote is four to one. Thank you. Being served on what date? Uh, thank you, Matt Fish. I see the gentleman here. If uh, uh, John, no, go ahead, Kim. Yep, I'm going to have to. Dick Smith, Dick, would you mind waiting? Uh, you, you're we're running a little bit behind, and I know, so if you don't mind, we'll hear this before yours. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kim, for bringing that to my attention. Uh, again, all witnesses uh, are going to speak in this matter. Please stand. I, we asked for. I don't believe he has. No, you need to. You need to stand and raise you your right hand. Stand, raise your right hand. Uh, do you uh, solemnly swear that the testimony that you will give at this hearing is a complete truth? Yes. Thank you very much, uh, hey, Mike. Mike. Joe. Yes. Mike, before we start, I just, how's the board, I, I do business with the Mad Fish. Does the board okay. have a problem? Do you have a problem, Mike? Do you have a problem if I sit in? I think I can. I do not. Okay. All right. Except yourself. Okay. No, I, I don't have a problem with it. Thanks. Okay. I'm again reading from a police report written by Detective Robert Rappold. It's on uh, April 23rd uh, during uh, compliance check over. At approximately 8.34 p.m., uh, a 19-year-old was sent into the Mad Fish restaurant. Uh, he was sent in there with a 27-year-old. They uh, ordered two draft beers, and at that time they were served two draft beers. Uh, they immediately left the restaurant. They described for Detective Rappel, the bartender, uh, by name. In her description of the clothing, Detective Raffold went in, again identified uh, uh, this woman. Later, uh, the next day, he went back and confronted this woman and got all her uh, details, her information. Is that, is that it, Mike? That's it. Questions from the board of the detective? Mr. Vignetti? <coughs> Just to clarify, detective, th very exactly same circumstance as the prior one. This, this establishment was found not in compliance in 2007, and this is the second time that they've been found not in compliance in this sting operation in 2009. As it relates to compliance checks, there's yeah. been two failures. Right, and those are the only two that have occurred That's correct. in that time period. The first time when it was brought before you, you had a written warning, and you were asked to, to do the TIP certification. We did that. You did that, and yet still another violation occurred two years later. Um, that's just kind of recounting the facts. I, you know. <laughs> at at yeah, first, yeah, if we could just yeah. keep ourselves to the, let, I'd like to at least initially, yeah. whether a violation occurred before we get into the other aspects. Just, can, we, can I ask him a quick Absolutely. question? Absolutely. What have you done since the first violation? Well, I took, after the first violation, I took all the bartenders to a tip training. They all got tip certified. I've been TIP certified myself four times. Uh, now, after the second time, I had to hire people, sit in the front door, hire bouncers, don't let anybody under 21 to go in the bar area. That's the only, I thought that's the only way to do it now, how to hire somebody just to check IDs, just to sit in the front door and check IDs for people walking. So what happened? 
No, after I got. Oh, after started. the second violation. So after the first time, I took everybody to TIF training. Okay, and then after and the second one, you did these other. they failed again. So then I hired. I had to hire a bouncer that sits in the front door every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, and check IDs for everybody that walks in the bar. Was Carol one of the Carol persons? Is hold on, hold on, Mike. Yes. She was tip trained after the first offense. Yes. How long has she worked for you? Carol has been working for me since I opened her over three, three and a half years now. So, just before I give it back to Joe, Good. other questions from the board of Mike regarding whether there's a uh, violation or not, and then you can speak about whether there's a violation or not from your perspective. Joe, over to you. So, uh, you're, I mean, you're, you got the board chair. Yep. Sean, can I ask one question, Joe? Yep. Uh, <coughs> I would assume 8.30 the same night. doesn't say, but 8.30 Thursday 8 30 night. 8.30 plus okay. same night, yes, yep. April 23rd. Thursday night. Thursday night. Okay. Any more questions of Mike? None. The gentleman from Mad Fish, you spoke do you offense. Do you contest whether there was an offense or not? I mean, do you do you deny that this happened or have any no, no, any uh, yeah, beef, I, beef with the exactly lieutenant? The it report. did. Okay, exactly. Okay. What'd you, you do with the uh, with the bartender after this incident? What 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 happened on that front? I had I took her off the bar. That's about it. She's my manager. She basically does. She's my right hand. She does everything with me. She lives in the parking lot of the restaurant in the middle of cottages. She walks my deliveries in in the morning when I'm not there. And that's her full-time job. And I just, you know, every time something needs to happen, she's there for the restaurant. So I just, I didn't feel it that I should just fire her. I try, I sent her to get, to get certified. She did get certified. She's been working in the business all her life. That's all she knows how to do. What was her explanation for not uh, uh, guarding you? Or her explanation was it was just, it was, uh, it was very busy at the point when they walked in. Uh, generally, they both looked like they were over 21. And she was, because she was serving, the, she was serving everybody at the same time, so she just poured the beer out. I would, uh, if I may talk yep. uh, is there an agreement for uh, development of that site, has that been, where does that stand? The, there is no development agreement that w that condos or anything will be built on that well, site? Nothing at this point. Okay, I thought there were, I don't, okay, thank you. What's your current policy for carding people? We card everybody that walks in the door. Was that the policy that's on? That's the policy that I always tell everybody to do. That was the policy on the night that, that, she, that it happened. That's always been the policy. Your manager didn't follow the policy of, that you have of carding everybody that comes into that establishment. Yes. Well, now I had to. Now I hired people to sit in the front door and hire card everybody that walks in. As of the time of that violation, your it's always policy been the policy been to card everybody. It's always, I always said, we don't, I don't care if we know them, we don't know them, they look familiar, they don't look familiar, we always card them. It's a good policy. Uh, Rick Murray. Uh, I'm just gonna follow the same script we just did 10 minutes ago. The detective recited the, the facts of the case, the uh, owner did not deny it and admitted it. So regarding the first part of our uh, duties tonight. I would move the Board of Selectmen find a liquor license violation occurred on April 23rd, 2009 at the Mad Fish Restaurant. Second. Uh, motion been made on and seconded on whether a violation occurred. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. A violation. The Board has voted the violation uh, had occurred, did occur. Uh, the next segment of this uh, agenda item is to vote a penalty for that violation. Uh, I will open it up to the board for comments, motions, or whatever they feel they want to do. Again, Rick Murray. I'm, I'm just very concerned again, like the previous case here. I mean, you've got the, this happened again. Um, there's a little difference here in that um, this is your manager, and I didn't quite pick that up here until it was something you just said. The woman whose name is mentioned here, that is yes. your manager? Yes. Okay. Well, she's, I'm the manager, I'm the GM. I'm in there seven days a week. She's, she's in there, she opens up the place. 
she lets all the, the delivery in. So this is this is a person. Wants. This is a person of responsibility. Yes. This isn't just a. Um, no, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to be. No. You know, but I'm pejorative the about I'm rank there here. Seven but seven days a week myself. Okay. And all right. I'm the. G I'm the. Okay. I'm set, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion from the board. Well, not to repeat myself, but I feel the same way that I did the prior one, although I don't know how the board could violate, you know, penalize one person differently than the other for the same violation. But I think that the penalty should be a three-day suspension of the license, um, as I thought in the first establishment, and um, for the same reasons that I stated earlier. Thank you. Other comments from the board or a motion? All right, no I'm, comment? No, no, I, I was just going to how to put it in words, but I, again, you know, to be consistent with what we just had, one's a bar and one's a grocery store, violations are the same, to be consistent. I don't know when you came into the room, I saw you sitting behind Kim, but it's very, very serious, and, I, you know, we, I don't think we are held to, well, we were earlier, but if the circumstances are different, if something else happens and an a, a motor vehicle accident happens or something bad, I, you know, I don't know if I would just vote for the three days. I just, again, I'll, I'll vote to suspend for three, or vote to suspend for three, hold two in suspension to serve for one day on a Thursday night. Is that a motion? Yes. That is a motion. Consistent to what we did earlier. Okay. That's a motion. Is there a second to Mr. Harris's motion? I'll second that. Um, I just want to say one thing. Um, if this comes before me again, I mean, the fact that it's your manager um, right. is, is, is certainly now beginning to twist into a different s subject area, or a different kind of animal, so to speak. But I'm going to tell you, Mr. Celia, um, I'd be inclined to say that if the manager or yourself or somebody makes that gross error of misjudgment that, yes, now, now we can change the board without being arbitrary or capricious. Um, but I think, you know, we've given you a warning. Uh, you've taken some steps, I'm assuming, and with, with and I have no reason to doubt you about putting a bouncer or somebody at the door. But I'm going to tell you, if, if all these measures are beginning to fail in the future, um, then, you know, the penalties are going to continue to, to, to mount. And, um, you know, um, so I, 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 would, I, I would agree. I think it's, it's not much of a difference than the other, but I will say the one thing that does kind of pique my interest is the fact that it was your manager, the person you rely on, and no matter how bu busy the establishment is, you know, you've got a policy, and that policy is to card people. She should do it. She's the manager. She sets the example. And if you fail at the top, then it's only going to get worse down as it gets further with your employees. So, um, you know, I think talking to her is one thing, but cer certainly um, uh, and um, encouraging her and um, telling her that, you know, um, she, that can't be done. She sets the example. That's your obligation. Well, she got removed from the bar, so she's no longer working at the bar. Okay. Um, is, the, it, is the board have any thoughts on the date that the one day of the three-day penalty, if it's, if it's voted, will be served? September 10th. It's it's the same day, same day right? Thursday. It's the same Thursday of the infraction. It's Okay, so yeah, uh, the board. Mike, will you will the police department check the establishment of that day? How does that usually work? Yes, we'll check both establishments yeah. that day. Okay. Um, do you understand the the motion? No, I, yeah, I absolutely do. So one day, if it happens again, you come back in. If, if found guilty of the second, your suspension will be started immediately. The other two days, and you'll also be facing the the. The allegation, allegation that, that brought you in. So it could, <coughs> and at that time, it's based on the feeling of the board. Uh, I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that your license could be taken. But All right. Further discussion? One, one last yep. point. I, I think it's important that as a board that we, we look at these guidelines at future mm -hmm. meetings and figure out what they are so that we can get rid of the subjectiveness yep. of this. And I, I'd hate to... I don't hate to think, but I, I, I want to make sure that we don't take the results of these violations into consideration in terms of what the penalty should be. Whether someone gets caught or someone gets in a car accident or anything like that should have no mm -hmm. impact whatsoever in terms of what the penalty is 
for the establishment um, mm -hmm. breaking um, the law. So, you know, I, I agree. it's important, and then maybe we can eliminate the subjectiveness of these discussions. Okay, final comment. Though. Brief comment. I, I agree with Tony. We should discuss this uh, in the future. And my only other thing, I would just like to thank uh, the detective and the, tech and the officer, detective, um, for their work in the police department on bringing this to our attention and for being vigilant on this. Thank you very much. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And the vote is four to one. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, <coughs> yeah, Dick Smith. How do you do this? Just keep pushing the buttons or something now. I thought I did. <laughs> Dick Smith. Uh, He's above my pay scale. <laughs> we have a. Uh, no, we don't. Excuse me. I stand corrected. Oh, 745, we do. Come in. Uh, if Rich Lane, if you don't mind, Rich, you're ahead of uh, Dick on the agenda, <laughs> but he has a 745. Uh, great learning. Fine. <laughs> uh, Dick, what you come on up? The new. Uh, you know I mean? sure. He can't get it either. Okay. Uh, this guy's sure. The sure. item in front of us here is a transfer of a liquor license, uh, as well as a transfer of the common vic license uh, of Tedeschi's and our situation. Dick, go ahead. Start us off. What's going on? Well, I'm going to retire. Okay. After 40 years, and we're selling the franchise and everything to Mr. Brian Gilmet over here. Mm -hmm. And that's what just trying to transfer the license over to him. Okay. So the first item again is the uh, transfer of the of the liquor license. Is that correct? I think. Uh, yeah, it is. Discussion from the board on the transfer first of the liquor license. Mr. Chair. John. Mr. Gilmet, welcome to the town of Situate. I see that you live outside of the town, but you're coming. You just went through a liquor license hearing concerning two establishments that were found in violation. I hope you take that as a warning, if you will, and that now that you're taking over the great establishment in our Situate, that you will endeavor to ensure um, that your employees and our certainly vigilant in ensuring that they are not going to be selling to minors. So, um, you know, um, this, this board tries to very hard to make sure that, you know, we, we try to thwart it. And, and you're taking on that obligation, that responsibility. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to see that this is happening, but I hope that, you know, from hearing this, these two uh, <laughs> hearings that you sat through, that, you know, we're not going to hear that, you know, this establishment's going to be in violation. Um, so just keep that in mind. It was in the past uh, one of the other stings. It wasn't this time through, but it was uh, two and a half years ago. So that kind of is, is the history you're taking as the now proprietor of that establishment. But I support this transfer, and I, I wish you well in your endeavor. Further discussion on the transfer from the board? Just one quick question. One question. How much experience do you have in, I see you worked at, at a Tedeschi. Did you work at this one? Uh, no, I owned the one in Kingston for five years. Oh, you owned it? And I was corporate manager for six years before that. Okay, because I, I thought I saw two and a half years of. Yeah, I saw that too. Uh, six, the six years of corporate, I actually ran a store with Beer and Wine. Oh, you did? Yeah, for two and a half years. Good. Six, okay. yeah. And you owned a store, so you had, did they have a liquor license? No. They did not? No, that's why we tried to buy this one to upgrade a little bit. Okay. And do you have any sort of certifications? I'm already tip certified. You're tip certified. And you work, did you work in a store, the one that you didn't own? Did they serve liquor? Uh, the, yeah, six years corporate. I had, uh, I had a store for two and a half years that I was in charge of Bear Line. You were? Okay. I, I was the manager. And then so I owned one my own five years. So no Bear Line on that one. Great. Further discussion from the board? The one in Franklin, is that the one that had the Bear <coughs> Line? Did you? All right. You still going to be open 24 hours? Yes. Yeah. Motion. Motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the transfer of the retail package goods store wine and malt beverages license held by Pixie Foods Inc. DBA Tedeschi Food Shop number 359 to JBNJ Foods Inc. DBA Tedeschi's number 359 for the premises located at 337 Gannett Road. North Situate, Massachusetts, 
and described as a one-story concrete block building with one main entrance and one rear exit. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, further discussion from the board, from the floor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. The next item, thank you, is the, uh, so we have to vote, that you're done, vote a uh, common VIC license to allow this gentleman to sell Want a motion? Motor, love a motion. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a common Vic Jewelers license uh, to JBNJ Foods, Inc., doing business as Tedeschi's number 359 at 337 Gannett Road, North Situate. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Good Congratulations luck. and welcome to Situate. You can retire. Huh? You can retire. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I got a wedding to plan. <laughs> uh, that. Next item, we have appointments. We have a, uh, an addition to an appointment uh, file, okay. and okay. that's uh, seven. The May. We go to seven. seven. Habitat. Habitat. Uh, seven. Okay, Habitat. Rich Lane. I'm sorry, I passed over Rich, and then I'm ready to pass over you again, which I don't mean to do. Rich, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm here to ask the board to give their consideration to sponsoring an article to donate a parcel of land that's on Stockbridge Road to Habitat for uh, building another Habitat house here in Situate. Uh, I'd like to ask that they give it some consideration and sponsor the article to be put before the next town meeting. Basically, that's it. The the uh, yeah. I mean, ha Habitat has expressed an interest in that particular parcel because it is suitable mm -hmm. for at least two single-family homes. If Habitat will only do one at this time, would like to invite somebody else with the same quote-unquote mission, if they might be interested in doing it. Uh, I would ask that the board put the same provision on it as we did last time, and then that. The first go around for a recipient of the property or the home would actually be given to situate people first. And then, if there was no one in that category, then open it up to the other 28 towns that South Shore Habitat serves. But when we did a couple of years ago, there were 20 additional families that met probably 99% of the criteria. And I can't think that in the past three years that that number has diminished. So. Right. My hope is Habitat would be interested in doing two houses and. And I, and I know, uh, I know you understand that tonight the board, you're asking the board to, I guess, consider putting a, uh, an article in. Yes. And I say that because <coughs> if it actually, when, it, when the time comes for articles to be put forward, depending upon the plot plan and depending upon other circumstances, the board may or may not vote officially to do it. You know what I mean? We're not voting tonight to uh, definitely put one on. We're just entertaining. Asking for your consideration for this so that we can take it to the next yeah. step. Sort yeah. of a sense of the board type deal so Richie can continue moving ahead? Uh, that's, I guess, what we're looking for, a sense of the board that we, we, that we would consider putting it on the next town meeting. Uh, probably you probably would not have time to put it all together by the special town meeting. So annual. don't say the next annual town meeting. We uh, could surprise you, but yeah, at least yeah. by the next town annual. Annual in April or May, whatever it is now, April I guess. Uh, and we'd have hearings, etc. Advisory board would have hearings. We'd have hearings. We'd go through the same process we did last time yeah. when. Because we right now, without any plot plans, without any comments from about us or anything, we can't really vote. But that. Understand. Overall, I think this is great, Richie. You know, what you did with the first one was a wonderful testament to your commitment to the town, and everybody's chiming in, and you're doing the right thing for the right people. And my feeling is I certainly endorse moving ahead to the next steps, 100%. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, I think the first one was a success. Um, a couple things. This is the, the plot of land that affordable housing tried to put four houses on a couple years ago that yes. got the same parcel that failed the, on the objection at the time that was raised by mr lopes was that his neighborhood was dumped with everything 
before I got to this seat, I went, I talked to Mr. Lopes and I told him the proposal is two single family homes done by Habitat at this time and that they would be put up with first consideration going to situate residents. And he said, well, my only concern with that would be that can there be some type of barrier or maintain a vegetation that would buffer his property and uh, the solution to that would be to write it into the deed that a certain segment of the property would not be cleared and he would preserve his privacy. He said he was in support of doing yeah. this. There were a number of neighbors, as Joe yeah. brought up, of Butters they that were. were at that meeting. So, you know, it would be important to get the support of them. Right. right. I mean, the last one was isolated, so it really wasn't an a Butter issue. Um, a couple questions. Last time the town donated the land. They did. And then C uh, CPC gave... 75 that or gave I don't know the dollar amount. Yeah, but they gave there a, was a, a contr contribution from right. CPC and I was under the impression that do the proceeds from that property I, I got the impression that it was kind of like this rolling event that the money that you get from the sale of that one kind of goes into the next one yeah. is that accurate but I, it is it is accurate yes so at this point for for perhaps this property the town would only be donating the land and, pos and the proceeds from the other one would then help help yeah. build it. Right. Sir, for the record, we just identify yourself as a given, given it before. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jerry McDermott, I'm the Executive Director of Shore Habitat and um, mm -hmm. just want to touch on what the land is corrected. It is, it trickles in slowly over 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, but it does trickle back in. Okay. It does yep. Fund, so it does help fund the next house. Great. Um, Yeah, those, those are my questions. Sean. It's a great idea. I, Richie and I had spoke about this months, some months ago, and he asked me what my concerns were, and I, and I saw what, said what Tony had said. He had talked to the neighbors. They, they're all in favor of it, and uh, I'm sure Richie will see to it the next two do as good or better, make them fit with the neighborhood. It's wonderful. Thanks. I, I thank you very much for taking the initiative. Thanks, John. Entertain a motion? Anyone? No, we don't need a motion. Don't even need a motion. So okay. we could consider going to the next level. Go to the and, next step. Uh, go make, to the next step. Make plans, just, get a just, just to make sure the minutes are, are clear so you, you can, because if you're talking to other entities, I think the minutes should reflect that it's a unanimous consensus of the board that we support this in principle and endorse Mr. Lane moving moving forward and look forward to seeing an article that can be discussed and gone through all the various boards throughout town on a rough time scale for the next annual town meeting. I think Kim has that. He does. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again, Thank Rich. You. Thanks. Uh, the next item is an acceptance of a gift. We always like doing this. Accepting a gift from the uh, Situate Senior Association. I'll entertain a motion, then I have a comment. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept on the town's behalf a gift of $35,000 from the Situate Senior Association to purchase a new van for the Council on Aging. Second. Uh, on the discussion, this is, uh, this is the second van that the uh, Senior Association has bought for the Council in the past two years. Uh, safe to say, probably without the help of the senior association, these vans probably, these much needed vans probably wouldn't be purchased. So we are grateful to that organization for. I just, yes. I might just want to add, you know, at the <coughs> meetings, they will quote how many trips they've made mm -hmm. and what the vans need and what it takes for drivers and so forth. So it, it's huge. It's. Yep. Very much appreciated. Is it, Sean? Isn't it just going up every year? I, that's right. I remember the demand is going up. Just that's correct. Thousands right. and thousands of trips. Right. That's, it's too bad Ms. Burbine can't be here for this because she's the one that wrote the letter. But this is wonderful, and thank you. Okay. Uh, we do a motion. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion and second. Uh, all in favor, acceptance of this gifts. Aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Yeah, the letter will go out hopefully to the yes. organization. Uh, next, permission for uh, two parades, and we'll take these separately. One is the the Hammerock uh, 
and one of the very successful and good Citrus Beach Association break. Is anybody here for any one of those? Why don't you come up very briefly? We, we want these, these, both these parades have been long standing, so I think we're very familiar with them. Uh, go ahead, tell us. Um, uh, my name is Kathy Quessel, and I'm the, chair, um, the treasurer for the South Vermont Civic Association. Yep. And we're just basically asking permission to close the, um, the road during our parade. It's a brief closure. Um, and we've already contacted the Situate Police and the Fire Department. That's done, been done every year for? Um, 60, maybe 60 years. I can't speak to all of those years, but uh, <laughs> well, certainly, certainly some of them, and uh, okay. it's been very good. Uh, discussion from the board, if not a motion on the Hummerock Parade? Uh, move the Board of Selectmen give permission for the South Hummerock Civic Association's Horribles Parade to take place on Saturday, September 5th, 2009, stepping off from 4th Cliff Central Ave end at 1.30 p.m., proceeding to River Street up Alden Street to Ocean Drive and ending at the Julian Street Clubhouse at approximately 3 p.m. This permission is subject to all conditions set by Situate Police and Fire Departments. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for coming in. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Have fun. Would you like a motion for the next one, Mr. Chair? Uh, yeah, I would, there's no one here, obviously, from the Beach Association. Move the board of, move the board of selectmen give permission for the Situate Beach Association's Labor Day Parade to take place on Sunday, September 6, 2009, stepping off from the Beach Association's Clubhouse at the corner of Situate Avenue and Otis Road at 1 p.m., proceeding to Jericho Road around Lighthouse Point via Lighthouse and Rebecca Roads, and ending at the field at the corner of Turner and Otis Roads at approximately 3 p.m., this permission is subject to all conditions set by Situate Police and Fire Departments. I second that. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Two nice parades. Uh, the next item, 12. number 12 appointments. As I started saying earlier, there's, a, there's an addendum uh, on the appointment, so there'll be a, a, a motion after our third motion uh, dealing with the appointments to the town administrator and some some positions we must appoint here to. Mr. Chair, the only questions I have about these, and they're independent of the, the individuals or the boards, but have the, in this case, recreation, has recreation been in the loop on this? Maybe this is a question to Sean since it's one of your panels. What, what happened was after the appointment process back in June, they, recreation did not have a liaison to CPC. Mm. They had the board changed two or three members. So yeah. the new ones didn't feel they had the experience and some veterans just didn't think they had the time. Yeah. So they, we discussed it and we thought the best way to handle it would be to appoint an associate member to the rec. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of thought about it and I, I thought of Rich and asked Rich where he had the experience and he jumped at the chance. I sure. wish he was still here. So that, you know, they were quite pleased to have This is Rich. also. So recreation is on oh, board with all this. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Just want to make sure that the rec that at least the board is informed about what's going on when we're making appointments. Just oh. sort of overall. And again, this is not picking on rec oh, or no, these individuals. No, no, just, no, no, just overall. But it's important, yeah. No, it's I'm been all discussed and they're very pleased yeah, that Rich is willing to take. Just a, a yep. quick technical question. Does because I Sean, I don't they didn't have quorum to vote it themselves at that meeting. Richie's appointment yeah. as an associate. As an associate and right. as the liaison, right. so can we vote it before they vote it? They don't Absolutely. have to vote. They don't, they don't have, have to vote. Boys we do don't it tonight. Vote. Right. It's it's totally up to us. Okay, I got an email from Jennifer today, and she was just saying that they didn't have quorum to discuss it, but that they at the were, last meeting, right? Yeah, that right. The, I mean, exactly verbatim what Sean. But that'd be just like <coughs> the regular annual appointments. Right. You know, Jennifer. You know, we, we get the interested parties, and then we vote them. But associate members, who remember we had the. Technically, Tony, I, see what, I think what Tony's the point, and I, and I have no problem voting at all. Yeah. But Tony's saying we're going to vote someone a liaison from the Recreation Commission, and they're not even on. They're not having been voted on the Recreation Commission yet. That's my question. Yeah, and yeah, I exactly. don't have any problem. Yeah, voting I don't have any problem either. But Jennifer that's, said that's the question. yes. It fills you know a mean? void, and yeah. well, so we, 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 we do them in that order. The horse uh, maybe we can do pen, pen, we, How about pending appointment uh, by the Recreation Commission as an associate member? That would cover it. Well, no, we're, we we. Do we Kim, correct me if I'm wrong. Members? We we vote associate members of every panel, as far as I know, except for conservation. Conservation is the only panel or commission or committee okay. in town that has okay. the right to do it themselves, okay. regardless of what we do. 
Let it go. So, so, but actually by this one, the way these are ordered, we're going to appoint as an associate member and then, which is our, which are, which is our requirement or right to appoint, not theirs, and then we're going to appoint them as liaison, which is our right. So as long as it's done in that order, it's fine. Fine. Because two seconds after they're on, then we'll do them as recreation. So and move the board of selectmen to appoint <coughs> Richard Lane as an associate member of the Recreation Commission. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Next. Move the board of selectmen to appoint Richard Lane as the Recreation Commission's liaison member to the Community Preservation Act Committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next. Move, move the board of selectmen vote to appoint Peter Carlson, Adam Loomis, and G Gerald Loomis constables in the town of Situate. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Just quick, yeah. quick, quick question. With these, I, I read the um, letters of recommendation, and one of them, Kim, said that uh, that they had already done business in situate. So are these are, are these reappointments? No, these are new. These are three new constables. They're new. Okay, so. And they are asked to give letters of recommendation for attorneys that they have served with the court in the town of situate. Yeah, I read. Hmm. Unfortunately, one of them, um, Dean Norwell, has not has not done that, but he did give a fair amount of other recommendations. Right. So. And I assume we need more constables. Well, we do right now. Mm -hmm. Do we? Really? We do. Wow. How many we got on the book? Oh. I think we have, uh, we have six active ones. Active. And then two or three others that are, are not. Oh, that's all we have is nine or ten? Yeah. Okay, I, thought I we think had in more. years past we I had a lot more. Yeah, we've had a lot right. more. Right. Yeah, okay, maybe that's, maybe that's what I'm thinking. Some have not really. Yep. Is that an annual? Yes. It's right. every three years. Every three years. Oh, it is every three? I thought it was every year. Okay. I, sorry. All right. Thank you. Uh, motion to be made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Patricia A. Vincasey to the following positions. Affirmative Action Officer, Fair Housing Officer, and Local Auction Permit Agent in the following groups. Financial Forecast Committee, Cable Television Advisory Committee, and, and ex officio member of the Public Building Commission. Second only to the extent that it's been Chessie. Let's get this straight. It's from Chesney. Yeah, I, I was Casey, right? glad. Nick Casey? Ah! <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> right. I was. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. My wife, Sarah Nusaforo, schooled me on this. <laughs> uh, I'll still second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> In spite of her name. We're together, not the chef. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, the motion's been made and, and seconded. Quick before she says no. Vote it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Um, sorry. Other business? <coughs> who wants to start? Anyone who wants to I start? I just have a real quick thing, and I thought Al might be it. Tricia, would you just check with Al? The I know he's got a plan, but the intersection of Elm Street and First Parish, I don't... It might, they might have even put the final asphalt coat on, and I know they're going to do a, some type of an island there. You know, right in front of the old Finney's gas station. Different turn. Yes, right. Yeah. They're going to try to be. Yeah, just if he, you know, give me a call when he has a chance. I. That was. Anybody else? I have a. Go ahead, Joe. Couple, Kim. The planning board has reached a, uh, has interviewed both candidates for the uh, planning board position. So would you put that on the next agenda yeah. for a, a, a vote? Um, that's, I'll jump in in a minute there. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, yeah. Um, this first one is a, a little odd, I admit. But I, um, when I was on vacation, I, I happened to, for various reasons, go to two board of selectmen meetings down in the town of Edgartown. <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> Were they doing waterways at all or anything about any harvest <laughs> exactly. down there? Or? No, for, for reasons relating to, to other things. But um, there are two things of, of interest that I wanted to bring up. One is that they were discussing putting a windmill up to power their, um, to power their wastewater treatment plant. Yep. So I spoke up and told them that that's exactly what we've done and was able to have a good conversation with them and passed on Al's name. And uh, the guy there might be, co might be contacting Al because I think they're about a year and a half behind, behind us. And just the second thing, I just couldn't help to, to, to mention, uh, since this is the time of, um, of uh, Heritage Days, we think we have a tough planning for Heritage Days. We should listen to the Board of Selectmen talk about planning for a presidential visit. 
when they have to they had to find 150 spaces for 150 media trucks wow. in the little town of Eggertown. Just kind of makes kind of guys like I was sitting there going, "Wow, glad we don't have to deal with that." But anyway, just thought I'd mention that one particularly about the windmill. Um, also, thank you, John, for reminding me about waterways. Um, the travel lift arrived today. I just wanted to let people know. A brand new spanking travel lift that's down on the park. The building is just about done. I really encourage, I know I mention it all the time, but I mean, truly, well, the weather is so nice right now. Go on down, take a look. Um, Mr. Foster did a very good job cleaning up and vacating the premises. He worked hand in hand with the new, new boatyard people coming in. The place is looking really good. I really encourage, just drive down, take a look. The deck is on, on the, the building and it's just a real testament to everybody. And now it's just, it's just looking really good and, and we can really take a look at things. Um, I see there's a, the stormwater discussion the planning board is going to be having soon. And one question I sort of had, I guess, for you, John and, and Tricia, um, I haven't been following it, but they're talking about the square footage of things. And one of the things I was curious about was, did town meeting, and I didn't go back and look up what town meeting voted, but if they change the square footage, does that or does that not require another town meeting vote? And I'm not asking for an answer now, but I just think it's something that we might ask Laura about or, or just pay attention to or keep an eye on. Um, because that was the, the hot button issue that people were discussing at the time, if I recall. And I don't know what the latest is, but I just, since we got a couple of those emails making that announcement. Um, my last thing I did want to mention um, is uh, I was at the Conservation Commission meeting last night because there was a lot of discussion about the, the boat yard stuff, and the Squashicket Pond, and also the uh, Driftway Trails. And um, much of that discussion went very well. Mark Stewart gave an update on the Driftway Trail, which we're seeing under construction from where Driftway turns off of old Driftway. Old Driftway turns off of new Driftway. Um, there is also, though, one thing I was concerned about, further discussion of the first Herringbrook footbridge, which we discussed last time and was covered in the newspaper and so on. And one thing I was very concerned about was they were talking about continuing to move forward with getting, um, you know, the uh, EIR statement, how to move ahead and get an ANRAD and get the wetlands delineated, going south on that trail all the way down. And they were also talking about how to fund it and one of the things that was suggested was if and when they had money left over from the path that we're currently seeing under construction downtown, taking those excess monies, if there were any, and applying them to the rail trail going down and the bridge project. And so since the board discussed this two weeks ago, and maybe there was discussion when I was away on vacation, so I just got back on Saturday, but I did want to bring it to the board's attention that it seems like Things are still moving ahead on that particular project. So I just I, wanted I, to bring I, that to the board's attention. I think uh, without getting into it too, too deeply, Tricia yeah, also right. has had discussions uh, with some members of conservation right. uh, on the trail. So right. I think. Yep. But we will reinforce our yep. well, that's great. position. And then did people see our own Nicole Harris featured so prominently <coughs> in the uh, ledger yesterday and today? There was an accident with. Um, some kayakers up on the Gannett Road, and uh, she figured prominently in, in virtually saving the life, as we recall from up in Hull, there was an unfortunate fatality about two years ago. And there's some pictures about this other poor woman getting dragged under there, and Nicole, and uh, I think it was Eric Steverman. I have a letter Steverman. that I'll read yeah, shortly. Yeah, which is just great, and uh, great for Nicole and, and the officer. Just wanted to bring people's attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Tony? Uh, just two quick things. One, uh, I just want to thank the fire department for their continued great work. Um, they made a late night visit to my in-laws house the other day and they had nothing but wonderful things to say about them. So if you're listening, thank you for uh, the continued great work. Um, the other question that's popping up is a special town meeting. And although we don't have to, you know, get to tonight, but at some point, Trisha, I don't know what the requirements are for us having one, but people are talking about dates and wondering whether whether one actually has to occur. So if you can get an email out to us saying what the requirements would be if we actually have to have one this year or not. I, I can speak to that now, actually, Joe, and unfortunately is that um, we haven't discussed this earlier because um, I know in terms of practical closing, I kind of am out of the book. And one of the great challenges
scores in addition to closing in all the accounts, it's also keeping what we had earlier in the current year because it's estimated to score with all the free cash that we take. The free cash number on the state bank account will be different because it's all just taken in the day or because the gap is in our account is still short by five cents, we're paying at about five hundred thousand dollars for a small amount of that. So now we got the three point two million for the this week. I think you're meeting September 3rd. September 3rd. Uh, That's it. Just, just on following that, um, uh, Tricia, um, I was wondering, and not for tonight, but I know one of the things that I, I think we talked about, um, if not our last meeting, the meeting before, about trying to get a gauge of trending, where do we stand this year as compared to, let's say, last year. And I know that you, you know, I'm only asking to maybe remember that maybe either for our next meeting or something to get an idea because what I'm trying to determine is are we not taking in enough and uh, what do we have looking forward towards next year <laughs> so um, it just gives I, I'd hate to I don't want to find out I don't think anybody wants to find out in December January or February that we're further it, it, that's why I'm kind of gauging like what do we look like in essence September of 2010 or 2009 how did we look in 2008 and and kind of trending that and seeing if the gaps getting smaller or staying the same or getting wider but I only me mentioned that I'd, I'd like to know. And if I can piggyback that for one second, also I was at the school committee meeting last night, and they're even looking to the next year, you know, 2011. What is it looking like so that they can start getting their ducks in order too? So, you know, so focus. I think, I think yeah. So the financial forecasting committee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate it because that's wow. what I, I figured we're in the summer. It's kind of you're, everybody's getting settled, but I know as of September going forward, it's going to start moving. So thank you, Mr. Sean. Nope, oh, all set. I just have a couple of things, if I may. Uh, one, I've asked him to put on the uh, the future agenda when we have one that uh, isn't too full. The idea uh, of a beach enterprise fund, yeah. and that was really generated by the by the conditions of the beach this summer and, and, and uh, what we can do to, to to alleviate that problem. Tony in the past has said he's absolutely correct. You know, we're, we're a coastal community. We have beaches. Uh, they should be as best best as we possibly can make them. And right now, with the budgets being the way they are, it's, it's very difficult uh, to maintain them the way we would like to maintain them. So I put on this just for discussion purposes to see 
where it goes. That's all. Simple as that. Great idea. Okay. And to follow up, yep. we've also been getting a lot of emails about lifeguards. Yep. And that um, falls into yeah. the same. Right. Yep. Unfortunately, at this time of year, all our lifeguards are college students, and they start going back to school. And um, I think John brought up at the last meeting that there's this, you know, there's a schedule of when the different beaches closes at what date, and at that point they won't be guarded anymore. So, you know, pay attention to that as as you go to the beach. Uh, secondly, and, and most importantly, I think it's my understanding that Brian is soon to get married. Am I correct? Saturday. Oh, Saturday? So wow. On behalf of the Situate oh, oh. Board of Selectmen, uh, we'd like to congratulate you and, and wish you the best of luck. Write that down. Huh? Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Great news, Brian. Congratulations. Uh, that's all I have for other business. Next, if any, no one else has anything else? Uh, correspondence. Uh, John, would you read that one? Yeah, this is um, um, <coughs> dated August 24th, 2009. It's from Nicole Harris uh, to Brian, Chief Brian Stewart, and it's regarding uh, Eric Steverman. Dear Chief Stewart, I'm writing this letter in hope that Officer Eric Steverman will receive recognition for his valiant rescue of a teenage kayaker trapped by a powerful uh, tidal current in a culvert under Gannett Road on August 22nd, 2009. Her friend on the same kayak had just been pulled to safety when Officer Steverman arrived on the scene. Efforts by passerby uh, to extricate the second girl wedged between her kayak and the culvert had been unsuccessful. She was in imminent danger of being swept under the culvert. Officer Steverman quickly responded by entrusting several bystanders to hold a rope while he lowered himself down, balancing on a kayak in adjacent concrete revetment while pulling the girl to safety. There is no doubt in my mind that Officer Steverman's immediate action, professionalism, and calm demeanor during this emergency averted a tragedy. And that's by Nicole Harris. And, uh, you know, as, as the board has said, uh, thank you, uh, Officer Steverman, uh, for obviously um, heroic, heroic effort. Kim, if, if you would draft maybe a letter that could be put in Officer Steverman's file yeah. uh, from the board, we would appreciate that very much. That, of course, comes under uh, correspondence, uh, which we are now on, item number 14. I have here a letter from the Board of Selectmen, and I, I wish Paul Scott was here so we could uh, read it to him personally. I'm sure he's watching on I'm TV. I'm sure he wouldn't be. <laughs> I'm sure he's watching on television. Uh, Paul, as many of you know, he's recently retired, and, and uh, while well, this letter will speak to his accomplishments. The Board of Selectmen, dear Paul, uh, from the Board of Selectmen dated uh, August 25th. Dear Paul, the Board of Selectmen would like to congratulate you on your retirement after 38 years of faithful service to the town of Situate. We know that your employment with the town started in 1971 when you were hired as a town surveyor. In 1975, you moved into the newly established position of Supervisor of Engineering Services in the Department of Public Works. You also served on a number of occasions as the Acting Director of the Department of Public Works and had to handle those responsibilities in addition to your own with great attention and detail at all times. The infrastructure of the town depends primarily on the Department of Public Works and especially the Engineering Division. division. Juggling the many different project, projects from seawalls to roadways to sewer expansion to water main replacement is no easy task. On a daily, ba on a daily basis, you handled bid openings, contracts, contractors, with a high degree of organization and professionalism. As you know, back in the blizzard of 78, it had an enormous impact on the town of Situate. Our coastline was devastated by the momental storm and the destruction and the colossal cleanup which followed. Your amazing photographs of this event, which you have generously shared with the town, will live on as testimony to the historic event, which will never be forgotten by this town. The town of Citra was very fortunate to have someone of your caliber and commitment during a time of crisis. The information in your project notebooks was noted by FEMA, the town accountant, and the auditors for its attention to detail and accuracy. The 1991 no-name storm presented you and with another opportunity to put your considerable skills to work in the town of Citra. As a longtime member of the Traffic Rules and R Regulations Committee, you gave the group the benefit of your professional expertise, from smaller items such as stop signs to larger projects 
such as the reconstruction of Front Street uh, Vehicular Way. Uh, you have affectionately been known to your many friends at Town Hall as Grumpa. But we also know of your willingness to dress up as Santa at Town Hall Christmas parties, the Southwest of Fishermen at retirement parties, and a variety of characters for the Town Hall players. We also remember your great singing voice as you walked the corridors of the hall uh, and your generosity in handling out candy bars on long Tuesday nights that to sustain the staff. Oh, Mike particularly misses those delicious candy bars. Paul, we thank you for your consistent and professional work ethic and your great sense of pride in all that you've done and continue to do for the town of Situate. The town is a better place for your considerable efforts in the Board of Selectmen wishes you a healthy and happy retirement. Sound, signed by John Danahy, Sean Harris, Rick Murray, Tony Vignati, and Joe Knott. Paul, again, this letter says it all, but from the board, uh, a sincere thank you for all you've done and for 38 years of service. And as the letter said, uh, the town is indeed a better place uh, for, your, for your efforts. Thank you. Next is the... Well Medic said and well written, Mr. Norton. Thank you. Well, uh, I, I will take <coughs> the letter from the reading, but... Go right ahead. I've spoken also with Doug Smith, Chairman of the Historical Commission, and he's got some interesting ideas as well as some of the concerns. Um, I'd be interested in being one of the two if you want to go right with that. What we just, good, that's one. Uh, what Trisha didn't mention, but I think is very, very important, uh, there seems to be a lot of interest, and, and rightfully so, from a lot of different areas, organizations. And I, I have a feeling, just by reading some of the emails and memos, that everyone's going in the same direction, but, and I'd like to ask publicly uh, and, uh, that anyone who's interested would be historical commission, society, planning board, selectmen, go through Trisha's office so we have one central place Absolutely. to deal with this uh, so we won't come up with four or five different proposals a month from now. So Absolutely right. concurrence uh, will do that. All right, Rick Murray is a volunteer to serve on the committee to, to look into the possibility of going along with Cohasset. Is there another member? Sure. Well, John, go ahead. I'll be happy to. Sure. John I don't mind. Okay. So, yeah, the board, thank you for um, volunteering, and I don't know. The so we wait to hear from you? Great. Maybe you get back to us. We'll get back to yep. Trisha. Sure. See where it comes. We'll see if we come up with anything here. Right. Um, any other business? None. Any other correspondence? None. Next. Minutes. I move, move that board the board select and vote to accept the minutes of March 31st, 2009. I'll second that. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, next item. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at 8.51 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, folks.